They, they called it the Madonna look. Yeah. Um, and I mean, there were thousands of kids across continents dressing like, dressing him. like him. Yeah. Um, did that surprise you? Did it Absolutely. You? I mean, I didn't, you know, the thing that I used to tie in my hair all the time, mm. my hair was really short and it was growing out, so it was bugging me. It was always getting in my face, so I used to take a pair of tights, stockings, tied around my head. Or, a, you know, it, it was completely absurd to me that everybody wanted to do that. I mean, it was a mistake, really. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, and all the bracelets and all the necklaces, a, a group of my friends, Martin included, we just got on this kick where we would, we started this thing with those rubber bracelets and we would, we had, we literally had a competition to see how many we could get, acquire, and we never took them off. We would take baths in them and mm. everything. And then the layered thing with the crosses kind of was inspired, you know, by the bracelets and the thing about wearing a rosary around my neck, there was something kind of irreverent and tongue-in-cheek about that because um, it didn't really go with the clothes I was wearing. So um, it just really evolved organically. Well, I mean, you know, there could be some people in the press that sort of called it just the Madonna craze that'll die and go away. Um, well, maybe that fashion went away because you because were I first changed. to kill it. Yeah. Um, but um, well, Madonna, nobody dressed... Madonna didn't go away. Well, that's true, because I'm not a, an article of clothing. Right. I mean, when you read the press and they, they say things like that, and they're inferring that you're going to go away as well. She, you know, she'll be yeah. gone next year, thank God. Yeah. Well, what happens is, is the annoying? press discovers somebody, and, they, <coughs> and they, they, they're, you're fresh and you're something new, and they build you up, and they say, wow, it's great. And then everyone kind of jumps on the bandwagon, and it becomes this kind of mania. And then everyone gets, every, the press gets sort of disgusted with themselves for building it up. They created a Frankenstein, really, and then they want you to go away. And so they imply that not to worry, because she will go away, you know, because then, it gets, then you get larger than life. And I suppose, in a sense, it gets frightening to people to think that you could have that kind of energy and power and stay, you know? Well, not only stay, but, I mean, people scrutinize you in a much different way, but it's also a bachelor look as well. Yeah. I mean, I remember when like the, the first photos came out of, for, for, the, for the Like a Prayer uh, launch and you had the black hair and people going, yeah. God, look at it now, you uh -huh. know? And there'd be debates in clubs and pubs and goodness whether knows where. Whether I should be blonde whether, or brown. Yeah, <laughs> and it really was on, you know? Well, the thing is, I, I, I wouldn't even be blonde now except that I'm doing Dick Tracy and yeah. I had to dye my hair blonde, but I, I was, I begged... I begged Warren Beatty to let me have dark hair because it took me so long to grow my hair out and I really wanted to have dark hair. I felt like I was, you know, along with the album, which is, was much more personal and stuff, I, I felt kind of great um, having my own hair color for the first time in years. Mm. There was something exotic to me about having dark hair versus blonde hair and then I had to change it so it was a little bit, I had a bit of an identity crisis because that's the the avenue I was going mm. down and then all of a sudden I had to change it.